Tim, you've used the word empowerment, and uh, the, the, the essence of, of your message is to empower a group of young people, empower an, an, a young person who's sitting before you. What do you want to empower them to, to empower them for? What's, what's the direction of this empowerment? Their best self-actualization. When we address substance use, typically in our culture, we do it from the uh, punitive perspective. And, and for very good reason, we don't want our children to die. And that's what's happening, unfortunately, at this particular time in history, we are in an epidemic. Uh, we are losing so many of our young people, so many promising, beautifully creative young people uh, to addiction, to substance use even, not even full-blown addiction, people who are having even one-time experiences. We are empowering them, or I believe we need to empower them to speak out on what it is they really want out of life and remind them. And the way to do that, again, is this language of empowerment rather than prevention, preventing them from doing this, preventing you from doing that. Prevent what if we empower you? What do you want as a young person? What is it you want to achieve? I want to go to college. Excellent. What do you want to do when you get to college? I want to be a doctor. I want to be a musician. I want to be wonderful. How are you going to do that? What are the specific steps you're going to take to get there? Those are all empowering questions. I'm not at any point saying, well, make sure you don't use drugs on your way. What I can say is an empowering question if the topic of substances is on the table, how are substances helping you attain that goal? And very quickly, most children, most teenagers will say, oh, it's actually a distraction. Okay. Now they're empowered to make a decision because they, they feel comfortable enough to address the fact that, yes, it is a distraction at a minimum, if not something that could be far worse than a distraction. So. No kid, I've, I've, I've always said this, uh, thousands of people I've worked with in treatment have never had a young adult or an old adult come into treatment and be able to pinpoint the morning where they woke up and said, today's the day I'm going to be a drug addict. Today's the day I'm going to be an alcoholic. Today is the day where I'm going to accomplish this life goal of mine to completely destroy my life. No one, ever, thousands of people. It happens in this progression that we are still learning so much about. Somewhere along the line, something shifts, something changes. Um, with the substances available today, th that happens all, almost way too fast in a lot of cases. When we empower a young person to say, yeah, I don't want to be an addict. I don't want to be uh, a criminal. I don't want to be a outcast of my family. Uh, when, we, when we remove some of that guilt and shame from the equation, we empower them to start saying, but I want to be this, and I want to be that. I want to be a member of my family. I want to be a member of my community. I want to be anything I want to be. And then we can start having a realistic conversation back to, well, how are substances helping you get there? And in some cases, unfortunately, the kids have all this information available to them, right? Some drugs of abuse help them to a point. Uh, amphetamines, for instance, they're helping kids get better grades. That's what they'll say. But let's go a little further on that. What's the negative outcome? What else is happening? Do you realize that if you're taking a substance that's not prescribed to you, it's illegal? So it puts you in the criminal category. No, I had no idea. So we, we don't have these correlations in these conversations because we're too busy telling kids, no, 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 don't, 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 don't. And they're too busy going, oh, okay, I'm not doing anything. They're, they're very good at putting up the veil of empowerment <laughs> to get what they want out of their relationship with substances. So let's knock down the veil by being honest. We know, you know, what do, what do you want? Let's get back to empowering what do you really want? What are your goals? What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? And do substances really fit there? In most cases, I'd say, if not every case, a teenager is very capable of articulating exactly what it is they want to be now. And that's something you and I have shared many times. This idea of children in evolution and children in development of becoming human beings, now they're perfect as they are. They're beautiful, they're brilliant, they're magical as they are. They have so much to teach us as they are. Let's, be a bit, let's do a little bit better job of empowering to be that rather than the next thing, the next evolution. Because if we do that, that relationship with substances is going to become very secondary in their lives if they know you're in their corner.